Good morning, everybody. Well, guess what? We have a hurricane coming. So a lot of you guys have kind of reached out and asked what we're doing, how we pack up, our travel plans, emergency plans, all that kind of stuff when it comes to being full-time in an RV. Well, a lot of you guys already know that this is our camp hosting spot and we are actually one of the last people to leave. They evacuated the park. Everybody had to leave today by 3 p.m. It's actually gonna be open tomorrow, but only for day use. So basically everyone that is camping here had to leave today. Fortunately, since I'm a camp host, I asked uh, very politely and they were very accommodating and they are letting me leave first thing tomorrow. Now, as you can see, I have most everything already finished. I went in and cleaned all my jacks, did all my hitching up maintenance. You guys already saw all of that that I did in a prior video that we just posted recently. And then right over here, I've got the truck pretty much packed up and since we're going to be hanging out during a hurricane. I kind of weighed everything down. But here is our little campsite. And I pretty much spent this morning getting all of the mats rolled up and packed away. I got the whole inside for the most part done. In theory, I could actually get us out of here probably in under an hour. Some of you have also kind of wondered, like, okay, well, if we live in an RV full time, what do we do when a hurricane comes? You know, for example, like, where do we live since they're evacuating the state park? I do a number of things, and it's all based on where the hurricane is going to be hitting land, what the estimated day that it's going to hit land, the category, and all the other things that factor into the tracking of a hurricane. So we are booked here until November the 1st, and today is August the 30th. So the hurricane's not due to hit until next Monday night into Tuesday morning. So as of right now, we are literally homeless. We have no place to go. So the other camp host, what they have decided to do is hitch up and they are literally just going to start driving south and hopefully be able to bypass most of the storm. And they're just gonna pretty much, I think, hit up Walmarts and Cracker Barrels. Well, I'm gonna stay local and we're very fortunate to have a RV resort very near to the state park. So what I did was just basically go over and I rented a space for the next week. And I'm just going to go and park the RV over there and I'm gonna set it up for a hurricane. So you guys will be able to see as I kind of show you some of the little tips and tricks that you can do to make your RV as hurricane safe that it can be. I'm also very fortunate that the RV resort also has a tiny little motel. And then just based on how windy and bad the weather gets, I'm literally just going to walk across the parking lot and go hang out in the hotel with Ziggy for the next couple of days and hunker down. We are now going to finish packing up and then I will see you over at the next campsite. So I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the things that I have done to prepare the RV. The last update for the hurricane was 
this morning at 11 o'clock. It's Sunday and it is now a Cat 5 with winds up to 170 miles per hour. So we are not taking this storm sitting down. We're taking it very seriously because it has slowed down and it is tracking only to the west and we are still in that cone of uncertainty. And for any of you who remember Hurricane Irma a couple of years ago, it was supposed to kind of go around through the Keys, but then at the very last minute, it literally took a hard right and came straight up the middle of Florida. So I always prepare for hurricanes and always take them seriously, even though we definitely hope it continues on the projected path but the science is not perfect yet it's good enough to let you know a hurricane's coming but until that last 24-hour period you want to stay on top of your hurricane preparation I can't stress that enough so the first thing that I have done is I have left as you can see I left the fifth wheel hitched that actually creates more stability because if the wind gets really really strong it can actually slide and push the RV. In worst case scenario it can also tip over the RV but if you have it hooked to your truck your truck is actually giving your RV more support and more stability from sliding and tipping over. The other thing that you want to do is you want to make sure and have your stabilizer jacks lowered because again that will help with the swaying and the sliding and keep your RV more stable. The other things I'm sure most of you know out there is that you should always fill up your tanks. That will give you some extra weight to keep the RV more stable. And then all you really have to do is if you're gonna be getting some high winds, you wanna bring in your slide outs, you wanna bring in, you know, obviously your awnings, and then uh, just hunker down. Now, what we are going to be doing, which this worked out perfect, the state park that we're camp posting at is literally right across the street. And I purposely picked this spot here. We have a hotel room right there for two nights to hunker down in. And then right behind the hotel is a bar. And I was told that they're going to keep the bar open, even though I've got plenty of adult beverage creations here that I could make if I wanted to. But anyway, Ziggy and I are going to be hunkering down here for the hurricane when it hits. Uh, landfall right now is projected on Tuesday and it's just going to keep deteriorating and getting worse and worse as far as the uh, conditions. But I just wanted to, like I said, just to briefly talk to you about the things we have done to prepare our fifth wheel for the hurricane. Now, I'm going to also do some recording of the scenarios and the wind and the weather and all of that stuff. I'll be recording us in the hotel room if that ends up happening. What's really cool is that the RV resort uh, that owns the hotel right over there, the motel, excuse me, uh, they are being very, very liberal with the bookings and all of that. I already even asked them, you know, what their cancellation policy would be, and they're pretty much going to waive all of that. So, fingers crossed, I'm hoping that we're not even going to have to go across the street and stay in the motel. And let's just hope that the hurricane is just going to stay off the Florida coast and out to sea. But we'll just be taking this a day at a time and seeing what's going to happen. But anyway, guys, I'm going to sign off real quick for right now. And I will just put kind of at the end of this video a little bit of uh, living through Hurricane Dorian bonus footage. So you guys can kind of see what's going on.
All right, guys, you can see on the weather, right here, we're starting to get some of those outer bands coming through. And of course, it didn't start happening until it got dark outside. But I'll put the camera right up here. You can see the street lights and stuff. And you can hear the rain. And once in a while, it'll get really, really windy. We're only expecting tropical storm force, though. So that means wind gusts between 40 to 50. So uh, I feel perfectly safe in the RV. You know, if the winds were going to be over like 50 miles an hour, I would definitely be going to my emergency hotel room, which I still have the key for. But I decided to stay here instead and just kind of ride it out. Dorian, are you ever going to leave? Well, it's Wednesday morning. I just woke up to this. And fortunately, Dorian has picked up some speed. Now... It's going about eight miles per hour. This has just won as the second slowest storm on the history books. The first slowest moving storm, I learned this uh, on the news, was named Betsy. And within 24 hours, Betsy moved only 12 miles. Dorian, when it was down in the Bahamas, only moved 25 miles within 24 hours, but it's still just kind of hovering over central Florida. As you can see, the outer bands are still just giving us, you know, wind and rain. And it's, you know, it's actually a really beautiful kind of breezy day. I'll show you guys through my window in just a second, and then we'll step outside. But I took some really cool bonus footage last night of the sunset and the clouds, and I'll be sticking that towards the end of this video. So definitely stay tuned for that. You can't miss it. It's just going to be gorgeous. And I also got this beautiful image of a rainbow against the storm clouds, and it just looks amazing. But we survived. We ended up not staying at the hotel room because the winds just weren't going to get high enough to justify that. So I'm going to be going down to the office a little bit later today, and hopefully they'll give me a refund since we never did use the room. But we'll see about that. But, you know, if I have to eat the price, it's better to be safe than sorry and always have a backup plan. You don't want to stay in one of these RVs if the winds are going to be like over 50 miles an hour. I personally wouldn't take that chance. I do know a few people who told me that they've stayed in their RV up to about 65 to 75 miles per hour, but that's just a little too close for home for me, guys. So uh, I would definitely be evacuating into a safer space. But let's just go outside. I'm just showing you kind of through the window what the weather looks like, but we're still just getting some of the outer you know, bands and you'll just get those occasional squalls coming through with some heavy rain and some heavy winds. But for the most part, it's definitely breezy. And it actually feels really nice out. But Ziggy and I, we've just been kind of enjoying ourselves. Hey, Ziggy. There's your toy. <gasps> you want to say hi? Say hi. Say hi, Ziggy. Good boy. There you go. Good boy. You want to go outside real quick? Go pee-pee? Come on. Oh, yeah, and I'm just kind of watching the news. They're finally uh, showing some images and stuff for the Bahamas. Uh, just so sad, so sad. I think they said, as of right now, seven people have died. Uh, they are, I guess, just starting to assess the damage and, it, and everything. So um, they're going to be setting up like hotlines and stuff like that for people who want to donate. Ziggy, I forgot about you. Come on, let's go outside. <laughs> But yeah, here's the outside. We survived. And everything's starting to get back to normal. People are out in their golf carts riding around. And Siggy and I, we are staying here for a couple of more days. And once we hear word from the state park, which is literally right across the street, we're going to go back and finish our camp hosting gig. And then we'll be arriving November 1st back to home base and we'll be there for the holiday months. And 
and uh, starting next year we've got some other really great things uh, planned and we're really looking forward to sharing it with all of you guys so have a glamtastic day guys be safe out there please uh, look into possibly donating to the Bahamas and helping those people out because they got hit so hard it was just it's just so sad and devastating uh, so until next time you guys have a great day bye okay guys it's a little windy but some really cool bonus footage the clouds are kind of breaking through the sky and the sun just set and I wanted to show you guys these beautiful cloud formations check out the sky these are some of the most beautiful cloud formations I think I've ever seen sun just reflecting across the tops. The colors are just so friggin' amazing. Look at this. Like us, please subscribe. And if you don't, our little fluffy dog will attack you. Arr!